students we are back and the next segment for Cornell note taking and reviewing we're talking about how repetition can deepen the impression and we've already reviewed this graph a couple of times we've talked about how we can retain information easier if we review it and go back to it and it's not going to be easy work it's a daunting task you may think about man I have to review information every single day just to remember it you might be afraid but the reason I started off with that Eminem song is you can't be afraid to take your own success in your hands so with that in mind let's get on to the next part of our lesson and that's what we do with our notes now that we've already taken the notes and we've read the notes and in our head we've summarized them because there's other types of ways that you can repeat and review information if you're only doing one form of repetition you're not going to get the full grasp of what you're learning so the first step is you're going to want to underline key information in your notes and that's where you do it over here in the right hand column after you've written your notes and read your notes and then a great tip is to fill in gaps with your partners so take a look around your classes and see the people that are reliable sources of note taking and ask them if you could take a look at their notes prior to a test and maybe you can fill in some important gaps the next big piece is looking for chunks of information in the notes and then numbering the main ideas in those chunks because as a learner when we receive a lot of information we want to have bigger categories in which to file the details and then finally in the left hand column of our notes we're going to run we're going to want to write corresponding questions and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment so what's going to happen next is I'm going to provide some examples of how you can interact with your notes and note make to become a more successful student. And after I give you the examples, I want you and a partner to finish the note making by underlining key information and numbering the main ideas and then creating questions in the left hand column. So with that in mind, I'm going to pull up the sample notes that you have in front of you. They look like this. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how I would chunk information, what types of things I would underline, and even some questions that I could write in the left-hand column. Now, first of all, when it comes to chunking information, the first thing I notice in these notes is this big chunk right here, and that's all about Michael Jordan and who he was. So I like to put brackets around my notes sometimes. And this bracket right here represents all the information about Michael Jordan's background. And then below that here it says the big question. And whenever a teacher says the big question or something like that, that's a tip for us as a note taker. So I know that this big question is the focal point of these notes. So what I might want to do as a note taker is circle this because this is the thing that I want to focus on with this information. And then as I look further into the notes, I notice these are these are pieces of information about what Michael Jordan did to help the Bulls start winning their championships. One was to get support from mentors, and then below that, there's some details about that. And on the back side of your page, it says to set up the triangle offense. Well, this must have been another thing that Michael Jordan did to win his championships. And you can see here a detail about what you can do when it comes to school. And then there's a third category here. And that's all about adding weapons to your game and the weapons that you can add in your academic game. So because there's three big points here, next to this first one, it would make a lot of sense for me if I numbered this number one. And oftentimes, I like to number things in different colored pens. And if you don't have a different colored pen today, that's okay. But I like to number them and circle the big ideas. So you've seen a couple of different things that I've done. I've bracketed some information. I've circled something, I've numbered a piece of information. You can even underline key points. 
Like I think here, a big point is how does this apply to me as a student? So I'm going to underline that. The final thing I want to show you before I give you and your partner some time to work with these notes is the corresponding questions that you would create in the left-hand column. When you think about corresponding questions, think about it in terms of Jeopardy. If you ever seen Jeopardy and Alex Trebek, he gives you the answer and then you have to say it in the form of a question. So in this case, with all of this information, the answer that a teacher might be looking for is that Jordan was mo one of the most dominant players in basketball. Another answer that teachers might be looking for on a quiz is that he couldn't beat the Pistons. And he didn't win his first championship until 1991. So a lot of time had passed from 84 to 91 where Jordan couldn't get over that, that big hump of becoming a champion. But then he won five championships. So if I wanted to ask a question here in the left-hand column that relates to these big ideas, I could say something like this. Who was Michael Jordan? And what did he have to do to become a champion? And maybe that's not the best question, and maybe you would have asked it a different way. But when I ask this question, I think about all these answers here on this side of the page. So there's an example of a corresponding question. You have an example of how to number notes, an example of how to bracket things and circle points and underline points. What I would like you to try now with your partner is I want you to practice note making with your partner. Use the notes that are in front of you. Use the examples that I just gave you. Um, what I might want to do here is I'll pull back up that example so maybe you can write those down to help you. Teachers, I want you to pause the screencast. Give the students about two or three minutes to, to make these notes and interact with them. And then we'll come back together. So we'll leave off just by posting these examples. Remember, you have a front and you have a back to work with. One immediate question that every single student might have here, and this is a huge question. I, I get this question all the time from kids. They're going to ask, how many questions do we have to have? How many things do we have to number? And students, listen to me, guys. This is huge. Never put a number on your learning. You want to think about this from the perspective of a teacher. If these are the notes that a teacher gave me, how many questions do I have to consider? How many questions should I anticipate that might be on that test? So think about these notes as test material. How many big points is the teacher going to try to ask or review on a quiz? Whatever that number is as it relates to these notes, that's how many major points you might want to number. So keep that in mind. Now teachers, pause this screencast. Students work with one partner that's close to you and work on questions, underlining, bracketing, and numbering. I came to win, to fight, to conquer, to thrive. I came to win, to survive, to prosper, to rise. Vikings we're back it's time to fly you guys had a chance to go ahead and underline and number and create questions in the um, in the notes that we looked at now teachers I want you to take a second to have some volunteers share what they did maybe do two or three volunteers and as you take these volunteers pause this screencast and then we'll come back for the next activity <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that you've had a chance to share what you would have done, I want to give you a couple of examples of what I did in my notes. You can see three questions that I asked here. You'll also notice that I highlighted something and I underlined a couple of new things. So first question I asked was, who is Michael Jordan? What success did he have? Second question is, how does Michael Jordan's success in basketball relate to my success in school? And students, 
if there's anything up here that you like that you should have tried or that you thought, hey, that, that might be a good thing for me to do, please feel free to go ahead and add those things into your notes right now. A third question I ask is, who can I look to to get support in school? And I ask that question because that's the big piece of this, this right here. You can get support from the teachers in this building. You can get support from the adults in this building that want to help you. So please, students, if there's any piece of information that you get from these notes, know that there's so many adults in this building that want to help you. And sometimes all it takes is you asking for that help. On the back side of the notes, you'll notice again I highlighted the, the big points. I numbered this one number two because the second thing Michael Jordan did was set up the triangle offense, and you can do the same thing by finding some reliable friends. And the third thing is that he added weapons to his game to figure out how to win championships. He became a good dunker. He learned to add a three-point shot. He learned how to pass the ball to his teammates. And you can do the same thing. And so I underline the types of things that you can do in school. And then finally, you can see the two questions that I wrote, who are two reliable friends that I can count on to help me with my school success. Ladies and gentlemen, birds of a feather flock together. So if you want to be a great student, hang around with great students. Look for examples of, look for examples of success around you in the classroom and hang with those people. The last question is, what other weapons can I add to my school game to help me be successful? And those weapons can be these things. Adding resources around you like learning new skills in terms of note-taking, talking to a counselor, using your planner, balancing your time, creating a good study routine, and then knowing how you learn. So these are things that you could have put in your notes. If there's anything that you see up here that you like, go ahead and try it out. Maybe you don't put it on this piece of paper, but the next time you walk into a class and take notes, maybe you can try these types of things. Let's go back to the next activity here. We're cruising here. So we've looked at different types of repetition. We've looked at interacting with the notes in the right-hand column. The next big piece, the final piece, is to answer each question you've written to compose a summary and that summary goes in the bottom of your notes and the other big piece is to use the completed notes as a learning tool and it says here for example the fold over fold over method let me show you that fold over fold over method really quickly and then I'm gonna ask you guys in a moment to write a summary of everything you've learned today so take a look here at our sample notes and I'm going to show you what the fold over method looks like we've all used index cards before on one side we might put a vocabulary word on the back we put the definition on one side we might put a math equation on the back we might put the answer this is the same concept with Cornell notes if you want to study these notes and get ready for a quiz cover up the right hand side of your notes then ask yourselves these questions and in your head try to answer them and after you answer it successfully take those that that sheet that you use to cover the right hand side move it and see if you got the answer correct and if you didn't get the answer correct cover up that sheet again quiz yourself again until you get them right that's the type of repetition that's going to take your academic game to the next level. So with that in mind, we're looking at two big pieces, two final pieces to the academic puzzle. Using the fold over method and answering every single question in your notes to write a summary. The next step that I want you all to take is to write a summary of today's notes at the end. Um, give yourselves about three minutes. Teachers, you can go ahead and set a timer if you'd like. Three minutes to write a complete and detailed summary of everything you learned in those notes. And then, teachers, we're going to wrap up with one more segment to this uh, lesson, and we'll be done for the day.